real life street stars, man. We got the man, the myth, the legend. Yeah, dig. Straight out of Cashville, goddamn. You buck, goddamn, it, young buck. You, you better see, know. still getting money. Look at this nigga chain, hey, man. Hey, man, listen, man. I got to do it, man. You feel what I'm saying? It should never be a point in your life where you don't get no money. That's the biggest Doing fact. something wrong. You dig? That's big. If you willing and able, then go get you a bag, man. You dig? Man, at, at what age did you see your first thousand dollars? Like your first thousand dollars? Like shit, yeah. I was about ten years old. Ten I, years old. Nine, ten years old. Damn. I had been pumping gas all goddamn day and ran into a few of the big dope boys in my hood. That was my hustle. Yeah. Outside of just fucking uh, cutting grass and shit like that, when I was like eight, nine years old, yeah, I'd run through the neighborhood with a lawnmower and, and charge a motherfucker twenty dollars, and then I would I was smart at the young age because I knew all the where the big dope boys and shit was. So I knew if I cut their yard, shit, they gonna give me a hundred. Yeah. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So what do you think about like the water boys in the ATL where they out there doing the water? That's like a genius hustle. I it think. is, man. And I think, uh, you know, we should respect that hustle. You know, there's youngsters, there's so many more things that they could be doing away from, you know, trying to hustle something that's legal and, 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 and make some money from it. I think it's a, a real uh, thing that we should respect because, uh, you know, they got choices as youngsters. They could be in the streets or they could be in somebody's trap selling something that we know is illegal or, or doing anything else. So let the water boys live, you dig? Let them live. Has, has anybody ever approached you and like maybe sold you some water or did whatever and then you gave them some bread and they look at you like, man, you young buck, bro. You supposed to have more than that. Man, them same little niggas that y'all talking about. <laughs> Just say, bro, you, Atlanta, you a little too iced up, my nigga. And a lot of them little niggas is notorious, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I done pulled up, like, you know, and, and the, you know, me personally, I, they're going to make their way to your car, you know what I'm saying, if you're <laughs> if you moving in something. And, uh, you know, a lot of my shit, pretty much all my shit is kind of tinted up, you know what I mean? <laughs> And them little niggas that sit at your window like, look, nigga, you gonna roll this down? You know what I mean? Then you, then, then as a hustler, you know, you looking at the young niggas and you like, yeah, I gotta respect it. So I roll the window down and, you know, I done try to get slick and pull it halfway down and stick the money out. It's always one of them little niggas that's gonna spot a Nigga, that's buck. And once they, they see his buck and they looking like, $20? Come on, man. You know what I mean? That's wild. I mean, I done had them little niggas ride all on the side of my trucks and everything. Oh, damn. They That's <laughs> where they need to chill at. Nah, for you real. Know, except what, 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 what you're giving. And, 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 and get the, don't jump on these folks' cars. Don't I watched jump. one of them little niggas ride all the way up the goddamn about a mile hanging on that motherfucker. Oh, he's serious. Oh, he, oh, he <laughs> boom, boom, boom. He hanging on that motherfucker. <laughs> Damn. You they know? tell crazy. <laughs> and you know niggas want to be respectful. Don't nobody want to see nobody get hurt. So, But I've, I've seen it a lot, man. Atlanta is where I've seen that at. You know what I mean? They big on the water boys. And even uh, La Boosie has just dropped a movie called Water Boys. I got to check it out and see what he got going on with that. Yeah. Definitely, definitely. Man, let's go ahead and go through there, man. Uh, uh, for those that are deaf, dumb, stupid, living on a rock, man, we, I want, for them that, who don't know where you're from, uh, uh, tell, them, tell them about Nashville. Because one thing that yeah. we hear in this day and age, everybody yeah. hear about Memphis, uh, all you hear for is sure. Memphis, Memphis, but Nashville is original yeah, music. Yeah, for sure. Town, mode, original mode. Well, exactly. You know, uh, you know, Nashville was established, I think, uh, before, and, and always will be established through really globally known for country music, yeah. you understand? But hip hop has always played a part in Nashville from the beginning. You know, we've had a lot of different local artists that, uh, that, that you know, made it established as Nashville. Uh, but me, I was the first one to actually called my city Cashville. Right. Because you couldn't take away from the fact of, you know, country music is what it is. It's one of the biggest genres of music in the world. Right. And I didn't never want to step on nobody's toes, but I wanted to just move the end to the side and just pull the C right there. So Nashville is Cashville to me. You dig what I'm saying? Cashville, Tennessee. And uh, honestly, I, I came up with the philosophy of Cashville because, you know, where I come from in Cashville, especially as a youngster, and even me, you know, speaking on my upbringing with, with hustling and shit, it was always about money. And then to this very day, it's the same way. You dig what I'm saying? So, you know, Memphis has its own morals and their own ways of what Memphis is made up. 
of and for. But predominantly, you know, Nashville, Cashville, we known for getting money out our way, you dig? Would you say, are you the biggest rap artist to come out of Nashville, Tennessee, Cashville? Uh, shit, it's hard to say now. We got so many. I mean, I've been the biggest artist coming yeah. out of there, but we got a lot of different artists that's really, you know, doing doing their thing right now. Like, I, I salute an artist, uh, Jelly Roll. Yeah, you know what yeah I mean? Jelly, Jelly Roll, Roll yeah. he's, he's really taking off uh, and doing his things. Uh, Yellow Wolf, you might as well say he's Yellow from Wolf, Cashville. Yeah. He's down there. Uh, you know, we got a lot of guys that, that, that still has... Uh, like that global effect band play. He yeah, was a yeah. big producer for a lot of uh, Young Dolph and all of his stuff. And um, you know, like I say, but I'm, I, I like I like to say I'm just like one that made it out of a bubble. It's a lot more to come. It's a lot more there. You um you had to leave the city to kind of blow. I did. Uh, you know, not only uh, from New Orleans to L.A. and Fact. whatnot. Um, why was it hard for you to blow in your city as far as was it a radio play? Was niggas giving niggas a chance? Well, honestly, bro, with no cap on it and I can't sugarcoat shit on this, on this interview, it was fucked up based on, uh, you know, radio play. For one, we only had one radio station and they rarely supported, you know, independent artists, you know what I'm saying? They may gave us a spot, maybe an hour spot or day, you know what I mean, where they would slam it a jam and play a couple of local records, artists, records, and uh, you know, if, if if the people called in and liked it and requested it, you know, they would acknowledge it. But that's pretty much what the most that came from it. Uh, even now till today, I, I don't feel like my city, uh, radio-wise, in regards to the radio, is giving enough attention to the talent that's there. You know, I come from a city that tends to support a lot more other artists' music than I own. You know what I'm saying? And I'm in the middle of still trying to break that monopoly. It's a whole monopoly in the radio world. So I'm not a big fan of the radio stations in Nashville, Tennessee. I deal with them. I rock with them. I've, I've, I've had good relationships with the PDs for years. And I think it's not their fault. It's kind of like the rules and this over their heads and things like that that does, doesn't allow them to kind of be as free as some of these other cities are in regards to playing independent music and really, uh, you know, help pushing a lot of independent artists from that from that place. You dig what I'm saying? So, so, so let me ask you this: what what radio station was like? instrumental in helping you get to that next level because i always think like you know we have artists in the city like we got walk you know we got yeah. people that we deal with and you see so, them grinding you know they putting out so, good music what you know how it, did you it get doesn't to that point? exist no more it was one day it just went it was like the station that really i feel like that was given the most support i've seen was i think it was 106.7 back then am i right yeah 106.7 and then one day you just turned to the station and all you heard was Damn. It just was gone. <laughs> Damn. Oh, they didn't tell nobody. <laughs> they, they, they didn't warn no niggas. Yo, we're going off air. Just one day you click on and it never came back. And then we have, you know, stations like 101 and shit like that. And, uh, you know, they more commercial record playing. You know what I'm saying? The politics of radios, uh, you know, individuals have their picks and chooses of who they like and, and they may spend their records. Yeah. But consistently in programming an independent artist who has a big buzz of a record in the streets like that yeah. in radio, there's not one station in Nashville that carries that on. So, I, and that goes on to this day. Like, they might be mad at me, fuck them. Yeah. Because they ain't really supported me the way that I feel like I should been supported being a pioneer, the biggest right. one to come from the city you would think that I would get some, you know, much more support out of our radio station. And a lot of it's been dream selling, you know, they'll talk that shit in regards of being in front of you. And when I say they, I don't want to call individuals names, but you know, like I say, I, I've, 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 I've created my lane of looking at radio, like, uh, especially in my own hometown, it's like, y'all the ones losing, not me. I'm already became who I am. I'm to the world. I'm, I'm, I'm bigger away from the radio 
I'm bigger away from the radio station in my own city in other cities. The biggest facts. And it'd be like, man, what, what, what what's, what's up with y'all? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I, I don't get a lot of inv invitations to do things. Yeah. And I've brought a few ideas to the people in positions of power and, you know, only for them to, you know, it's ego Did you driven. shoot most of your music videos in Nashville or any major ones? Yeah, well, uh, my first video that I ever dropped was Let Me In. Yeah. And, I've, and and that was the first video I ever dropped with G-Unit, signing the G-Unit. Yeah. And we shut down Nashville, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And uh, those records like that got spin, but I had the machine, the Interscope and everything behind me and the right. politics of radio by that time. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, that's how that went. But I've always kept it hometown all the way around the border. All, all the, uh, most of the videos that I do shoot, even now, is, is, is coming out of Cashville, you know? Yeah, and I'm curious, uh, do you feel more pride in your state or do you feel a way based on what Memphis is doing and the, 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 what, you know, the way Memphis is throwing out artists? Yeah. Do you feel more pride in your state or do you feel a way about like, damn, you know, Cash, you know Nashville could have, ugh. They got that same look, could the same type of talent be there too? Well, I think I think Memphis is is a city where um, they have a sound that was established for Memphis in a sense through three six, eight ball and MJG. So many different Memphis artists started to kind of go global before any artist from Nashville had a chance to get global. That there was no sound that the world kind of was trained to listen to because at a point in time when you thought of Tennessee. You thinking three six mafia? You thinking eight ball and MJG, uh, Tila? A lot of these different Thanks. artists mm -hmm. back then they kind of created and paved the sound at that time uh, were coming out of Memphis. So for me, it was more or less like you know sticking to the roots of 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 the music in itself, and I absorbed a lot of the Memphis sound yeah. because as being from Tennessee. Those are the records that we heard even in Nashville, Cashville, that were played in the clubs that was there. Yeah. I think the sound of Tennessee still hasn't been established um, of Nashville. Nah. It's, it's not like we are separate from them now as individuals and artist-wise, yeah. But there's never been an established sound for, say, Nashville and Memphis. We three hours apart uh, in the beginning street-wise a lot of Nashville individuals and Memphis individuals, we, we didn't, we didn't mm. come together. It was more of street politics for how, things or whatever. Like how far that. the drive from Nashville to Memphis? Three hours. It's the same way to Houston and Dallas. Dallas and Houston it's like the yeah. same <laughs> thing. Like it, it, a lot of stuff never kind of came together as yeah. it should right. when it's only three and a half three hours, hours away. away from each You'd other. Like, damn, you exactly. think we just get here and you run the state? You think we'll be all at one, but. Yeah. So when you got I on, rock did you, with Memphis like a yeah, I was gonna ask. When you got on, did you did you do a lot of stuff with Memphis artists? I know you fuck with hell Memphis. yeah, man. I've 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 rocked with a lot of independent. I, I give it up to Memphis first and foremost, you know, because uh, you know DJ Paul was one of the first individuals to put me in a position to to to, to make music for the world, and, and he gave me practically his platform when I was still a child. You know, he sent Project Pat to pick me up. You understand, when I was around 13, 14 years old and put me on, I think it was uh, on the Posse song, I forget what album it was on. Uh, I wanna say the Hypnotized Mind, it was like a compilation album where he had a lot of different artists and things like that, but I was young and a lot of people don't even know that was me on that record because I wasn't young buck to the world, but he seen something in me. I used to live with DJ Paul as a kid because I was practically homeless damn near. And I was young, and he, he, he really seen how I was um, hustling and how I did my thing and um, just kept me with him. So maybe about a year, two years, you know, I would be in DJ Paul's mansion waking up, living Man. life with him in Memphis. You dig what I'm saying? Man, Word. That was, before, that was before you got on? That was before I got on. Oh, and okay. that's my, one of my closest friends to this day. We're actually working on one of the biggest albums that I probably dropped this year. Oh. He produced the entire project. He's out here right now. 
Oh, that's love. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. You know tonight, man, tonight. Let's, let's, talk about, let's take an intermission real quick. We'll get yeah. back to the story. Tonight, you hear uh, 3 Six got a show. Yeah. You know what yeah. I'm saying? And we didn't know Young up. Buck was popping up. I'm like, oh, shit, what know. the fuck? This I is don't even, lit. I mean, shit, listen, bro. Surprises is the say the best for last sometimes. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. know what I'm You're saying? You're supposed to be a surprise guest, but you moving and grooving around this bitch. Yeah, I'm moving <laughs> like We ain't going to put this out. We ain't going to put this out until the, <laughs> yeah. the deal is done. Yeah, I'm moving like hell around here. I was just not talking about it before we started the interview. Uh, thank you, bro. I was I was letting y'all know, like, shit, man, I ain't been to sleep nah, since I touched down in Dallas. You know what I'm saying? Like, I I, I love this place. Is it, it feeling like 03 again? Is it like the way you feel moving? like 03, bro. It's like, <laughs> the way you moving? It's like, man, honestly, bro, I done been through, going through a lot of shit career-wise and all. But these last, and I pray a lot, you know, and I, I stand on morals and principles, so I ask for you know, me to be better and, 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 and ask God to, you know, take a lot of the pain away. I let go and let God. Yeah. When I used to try to fight public opinion with all this dumb shit that I hadn't had the experience and shit like that, I really made a decision in my life to let go and let God. And I'm watching my life turn yeah. and, and career turn as well. So a lot of people know that I've been talented. I'm one of the most talented. I'm, I'm not to be fucked with in rap. Have I feel like, do I have, I got my just due? Hell no. It's almost like I got overshadowed or overlooked once I started going through so much negative yeah. publicly wise, real or fake, motherfuckers don't create their own opinion. No, it didn't affect me. Uh, well, it, it may affect me personally at times in certain shit, but at the same time, I think it created a lot of Mystique, uh, mystique type shit in regards to my name. Always, you know what I mean? I always wanted this, right? Because uh, one of my favorite songs that you ever put out was Get Back. Mm -hmm. And it was right after, um, you know, we had a situation in Dallas where, you know, we had the black guy, you know, he did what he did to the cops, yeah. whatever. But that song was so, yeah. bro, that song was so powerful and lyrical. And I remember showing my girlfriend that song. She was like, Oh, what the fuck? Like, she, now she had that shit on repeat. Like, that's she became a super fan. Like, you know, anybody that's, that's real. you know what I'm saying? And um, I just want to touch on that. Like, what inspired you to create this song? Because it dropped, like, the next day. And you shouted Dallas out. I did. You know, it, it's just like the energy. That's what I do. I feel like I'm a product of my environment. And even though I might not live in Dallas or whatever, or being a part of certain environments, I still can absorb what's going on in certain Records, you know, or certain things that may happen, you know, motivates you to really dig in and put that in a record. I you know, so, yeah. it, it kind of over, overshadows. It's just like the Rodney King thing that went on years and years ago. It's just like uh, all of these fucking school shootings, all this shit. Those things that I've learned to, you know, touch base and kind of speak on real life shit because... One thing I done learned out of this music shit, real lasts is longer than anything with this. Yeah. It's so many different directions you can take the music with. We got a lot of guys that make music and they party records and things like that. And some party records last for quite some time, you know what I mean? But when reality, real and reality rap, and, and, and there's real facts behind it, those those turn into you know monuments you know what I'm saying statues to the game you did that's why that's why Scarface and shit like that is my favorite but I get that from and absorb that from him and Pac and shit like that since a young age it's like you know you got these dudes that will make these records that's party records kicking their records and then to come back and tell you you know Brenda's got a baby dear mama you know what I'm saying outside of giving you. You know, the other kind of records where a nigga saying, hey, I fucked you, bitch, and all that right. shit, you did. Right. <laughs> so, you know, it is what it is. But I got to ask, man, when you make a song that powerful, right, and you had some call to action, like, yeah. in that song, like, nigga, we need to quit playing. Yeah. Did you ever feel like, damn, like, the feds or the, you know how we, you know, as black people, we be thinking, like, you know, when we say yeah. some too real shit, like, yeah. maybe something might happen. Did you ever fear for your life? I, I, you know what? That's the thing, man. I've never feared for my life. I've always, um... I've always felt, well, damn, if they do do anything to me, hey, God damn it, I, I, I brought the truth with me. Yeah, 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 yeah. I got it you out. You know what I mean? I got it out. <laughs> yeah. If you I know don't get bullshit, that's the song I'm writing. Yeah. <laughs> that on my mama, but that, that ain't never, if y'all never heard that record, like he said, man, y'all go tap in and check it out. Um, 
I have a lot of people be like, man, man, can you give us, man, can you give us the, the straight, straight out of Cashville book and shit like that? Yeah, yeah. And, and I be thinking to myself like, you know, no, really, you know what I mean? Honestly, because I base my music off of the moments, you know what I'm saying? And here recently, I just started even picking up my cell phone, jotting raps down in it. Other than that, I've always walked in the booth and just allow what God gives me to come out and it come oh, out that the way. Dome? Yeah, oh, hell yeah. The I mean, it's not like I'm just freestyling this shit all the way through on some right. Jay-Z shit, yeah. but I'll, I'll piece it together, you know what I'm saying? And still to this day, like some of my shit is just based off of the energy of, because certain shit I feel like you can write it and say it, but if you go in there and just say it the way that it's given to you, It'll sound a little bit different than just reading it off of this shit that you just wrote down. Biggest you know what I'm saying? Biggest so, uh, what's the longest song you probably worked on that you just kept kind of going at? Oh, How shit. long were you going at it? I haven't done not one of them type of records like Game did, where it was just fucking what do you call that shit? Uh, Ninety-eight bars. Uh, a thousand, a, yeah, a, a thousand and ten, or two bars or some shit. Yeah. I haven't done one of them records, so I've always kind of really just. Uh, I've done records with no hooks, you know what I'm saying, yeah. and just roll down through there and then let the beat fade out when I finish. The most bars I would have probably put on a record, one song, maybe 40, 50, something around that, you know what I mean, a little bit past, almost putting three, three, three sixteens together and without a hook, I've done that, you know what I mean. I have so much unreleased music, it's crazy, bro, like, yeah, what does one do with all that music? Like, who who's the gatekeeper of that music? Like as far as I'm dealing with, the, you hear that sigh in the background? Yeah, I heard it. I heard it. I heard it. It's, it's fucking Charlie P. Cause he's like, yo, bro, why don't you just start dropping? Fuck, it's just oh. too much. You know what I mean? But, but I ain't gonna lie, like as a fan, cause I'm a fan of your music, right? Yeah, man. So it'd be like, you know how you be want to like. No, nigga, y'all can't fuck with my nigga, but then you don't put nothing out, so you be exactly. like, damn, be like, <laughs> it be hard to defend you. Like. See, that right there was real. I can, I can respect that. And that's how I think, uh, I, feel, I think that's how, you know, a lot of my homeboys feel at the point in time knowing, you know, the type of music that I do got, because they get to hear a lot of this shit. You dig what I'm saying? And it's like, you know, damn, man, man you know what I mean? Yeah, because. But I'm a timing person. No, nah, I feel you. You I know what you. I'm saying? And I feel like, you know, I can't just uh, uh, just do something or drop some music that doesn't, that, I, that I'm not mentally in the place to ready to go give to the world, even if somebody else is. And that might you be why your I mean? shit be potent, because it's a lot, like a lot of music today, it don't stick. Like, it's yeah. like it drop and it don't. It, it don't stick, like it but like, high. but like the songs, like even even with your album, you had the uh, the Ludacris and Ti, like you did Word. some next level, like niggas didn't see that coming at the time. Yeah, you right, always man. been on some. That, on that hey man, listen that song, man, that stomp, nigga. The I still can't figure out who verse was hardest on bro. that record right there. Uh, I don't know if Ludacris or Ti <laughs> and even Game had put a verse. Then it might be a tie. To that record, but <laughs> I, out of Ludacris and Ti and that whole thing that was going on with that record, I give them a tie. Y'all, yeah, man, you know what I mean? You there you go. Keep, keep give, it cordial. I gotta but keep you it cordial. That course, nigga. Yeah, both of them niggas had some historical bars. Bro. You know what I'm saying you, that they when, said. I ain't gonna lie, when you put that together, did you know it was gonna come out that good? I didn't, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I ain't gonna lie, you know what I mean? Bitch, I was taking Woo! a shot in the dark, you know what I mean? Like, look, at the time I really didn't know their situations and then I'm around Luda and a big fan of Luda, a uh, big fan of T.I., I wasn't around T.I. like that, but a big fan, it still is big fans of both of them, yeah. you know what I'm saying? And uh, it was a shot in the dark to just see how it was gonna go, but you know, Luda, uh, I think, I think T.I. jumped on the record first and, uh, you know, T.I. had a, had a bar on there, man, where T.I. was like, uh, now me getting beat down, that's ludicrous, you know what I'm saying? And he did, and he did kind of stretch it. Like and I was around Luda at that time. Me and Titty Boy is, is, well, very close at that time, so it was like, um, you know, I didn't, I, I didn't feel right because I was hearing different people saying that they had issues and shit. So I think I stressed out the titty boy first and was like, yo, 
man, I just done a record with and, and Tip jumped on there, man. I think I want to let Luda hear it to, to make sure, because people saying they had issues. He was like, no, nah, I, I don't really know, but I'll let, I'll let Luda know. Yeah. And shit, when Luda heard the record, he was like, yo, Buck, I'm getting on this motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, no. I'm I getting on this shit. For real, for real. And then, you know, he said and done what he done, you know, but like I say, don't, man. Don't let the nigga Luda get to a challenge. Man, <laughs> that, that, look, competition, one thing I learned that 50 Cent would always say, he would always be like, yo, you know, uh, a rap is like a boxing match. Everybody's fighting to be number one. And that's what I feel like um, the game is kind of missing right now where, you know, a lot of artists may have issue with each other and only thing they talking about is catching the nigga outside at the red light with the Draco yeah. and trying to do that shit for real. Nah, when yeah. when a lot of this shit can be, you know, turned by, you know, niggas getting on a record, you know what I'm saying? And 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 and, and create almost a stump record type of shit. Lay a nigga that's neutral in the middle. And y'all niggas go at it, you know what I mean? Like that, instead of going and taking each other lives behind the shit and, you know, risk going to the penitentiary and shit. You know, I probably wouldn't have talked like this, you know what I'm saying, a few years back. Nah, but nah, you you you, know, you, you, you were OG now to the point where it is you could it give is. a lot of game to a lot of young niggas because a lot of young niggas kind of jump into that. Um, Word. And I'm Word. curious, uh, have you heard of any Dallas artists uh, prior to, uh, you know, as of now? Like, have you, is your ear to the streets in Dallas at all? Uh, I, I'm a Yellow Beezy fan. I yeah. like Yellow Beezy. I like Mo3, rest yeah. in peace. You know, independent artists, I'm not really aware of a lot of independent artists yeah, no, those like are that. That really yeah, just took over the city. But those are two that, that, that's really, really, you know, on the map that not just from Dallas, but these dudes is talented as fuck. You know what I'm saying? Catalog. Uh, Trap Boy Freddy, yeah. uh, I've heard his music and shit. Um, damn, man, I'm just trying to think of it. You know, they, like, they, like that three-headed monster right there. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah they, those guys really, really has rung bells from a Dallas standpoint. I think at least, well, when you think of Dallas, if you was to speak on the media names, at least me that I can say think to come to my head like that. But um, like I say, uh, I've heard since I've even been here these last past few days, so many different independent artists right now. I just can't say their name. Like, yo, that motherfucker, that bomb. Check out a uh, big X the plug. Yeah, uh, there's a couple others. Uh, yeah, um, yeah. Man, there's a few. Uh, Dallas got some. It's bubbling again. It's bubbling. Yeah, again. hell yeah, as it, as it should. You know, it's a lot of it's it's a lot of beautiful black women out here. A lot of beautiful women. Period. You got a lot of get money guys out here. You know, it, it, this is a very and then it's a place where they respect the music still throughout Dallas. I love Dallas. I'm yeah, well, yeah, really Did you have fun touring, touring in Dallas and visiting Dallas? Shit, yeah. I've always loved this place. Yeah. I'm just considering moving in this motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know who I think about? Yeah. Erica Badu, the, the, you know. And you know she actually has a spot here. Yeah. Well, uh, I don't, don't, don't want to tell. Tell her I'm downstairs. Off, off, camera, we'll, off camera, we'll, 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 we'll tell you about it. Yeah. yeah, she got a spot here. She got a spot here. Hey, yo, man, tell her I'm downstairs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I turn yeah. into Andre 3000 on her <laughs> fine ass. For real. Uh, big respect, big respect. You no, know, but Erica, she's dope, bro. I think she's one of the dopest to do it. You know what I'm oh, saying? Yeah. And then she herself, man. I love her personality and how, how outspoken and how I'm going to do this shit how I want to do it. Uh, yeah. female Untis. is. I love that shit, but... Uh, Dallas, I'm loving da Dallas, you know what I'm saying? Uh, every city has its, 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 its negative side to it too, you know what I'm saying? And I'm sure it's the trenches and shit out here, like I've rotated through the trenches since I've been here, all through Oak Cliff and shit like that, because, you know, it's certain places that I know others can't go and I can, so I make sure I show that respect by being able to go there, so, yeah, I've been through that. I had to go to the place where my little bro got shot at and see See how that, where that was, you know, Lil Boosie, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah, 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 Over yeah, yeah. The, uh, Big T. Uh, Big, Big T's. Yeah. Yeah. I went through there yesterday and just kind of just wanted to see the energy and just see the people, being that I ain't been out here in a long time. What were your thoughts when you pulled up the Big T, like, when you said, just, just to see, like, let me see what this I, is. I shit felt like it, the Compton swapped me. Yeah, it's un, yeah, 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 no, exactly. In, in, in L.A., you know what I'm saying? Me too, yeah, some, no. some knockout. It's good and some, shit. They, they have a lot of knockoff shit. And you shit might see like a bootleg that. buck CD in yeah, it. Yeah, you might see anything in that motherfucker, yeah, yeah. but it was it was good energy based on, um, you know, being real and respected, excuse me, from the people, you know what I mean? I've always, uh, 
I've always given a lot of respect, man, honestly, because I don't go for no disrespect, you dig? So for me, it's one of those things where, you know, just being able to go touch these ghettos in different hoods has always kind of been a thing that I've done throughout my career because I was brought up in them like that. I've been a Rolling Stone for a long time, you know what I mean? From leaving Nashville, like you said, I had to leave there to go really get my career started from to going to New Orleans, to living in LA, you know what I mean? And you know, my life to being in New York, you know what I'm saying? So I've, I've, I've really been a rolling stone wherever I lay my hat is my home type nigga, you know what I mean? Coming around and uh, like I say, I give the most respect. I don't go for no disrespect. And it's kind of understood throughout the world, you know, Chicago, you know, all of these places where, you know, is really real. God has blessed me to, you know, really, really be there and really absorb the people. Those are the ones and the places I think where, where I'm here putting this business and in this game to be able to make music. I think my music uh, inspires a lot of individuals that's in the trenches because I come from them and it gives them a lot of motivation to either get up out of them or keep doing what the fuck they doing and try to get up out of them, you know what I'm saying, and shit like that. So I'm forever tied to the trenches, you know what I mean? And I understand it. Not to say that I have a point to prove or I'm going to go and, uh, you know, be this more time, more time, more time millionaire still in the hood type nigga. Right. But I've never left my city uh, of Cashville to live in no other city since I became young brother to the world. Oh, so you still stay in the city as to being- this very day. Oh, that's crazy. That's but crazy. I'm at a place now where I, I, it's time for Buck to move around. Yeah, I'm like, but no, I was gonna ask because- It's time for me to move around. But, but, but you being in the city, that had to give everybody else hope, right? Yeah, it did, and it motivated, and still give a lot of hope there and motivation. So I feel like my job's been done in regards to where I'm from. I stay there, I, I got children, you know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, you know, five of my, of my six kids is in Nashville. That's yeah. been the motivation of why I haven't just got up and left right. outside of my mother and, and, and the things that she's been experiencing going through. This always kept me there. It's, I've never felt like I've had a clean enough slate to just up and leave my people behind. Of course, I can bring them with me, but it's deeper than, you know, going and try to find another place or establishing yourself like that. But I guess the older you get, the more that starts to mature on you because I'm at a place now where I kind of know that I'm gonna end up relocating and getting away from where I'm from. I'll never leave in a sense of, uh, of not coming back or not, you know, uh, being a part of Cashville. But uh, it's a big world, man, and I feel like, you know, I've missed a lot by just kind of planting myself in this place, you know what I'm saying, that it's almost stunting my growth, you know what I'm saying? As an artist, I got a lot more to give with this shit. And, um, you know, I just feel like it's, it's time for me to just spread my wings and fly, man, at this point, you know what I mean? Word. Now, you about to do a, sh uh, well, again, they gonna see you, you on a show tonight with Triple Six and things of that nature. Um, yeah, man. Uh, the, they had a versus versus Bone Thugs. I was uh, there. Yeah, shout out, shout out, little flip. Uh, he came out did the freestyle. Yeah, hell yeah. You, you back though. Uh, yeah. Did your shit. Yeah. Did you feel like you was gonna have a chance to get out there after that situation that happened with uh, Busy and uh, Juicy? Did you, did you feel like this shit was about to get shut down? Did you even see what was going on? Like I, I was on the stage. Okay, yeah, I, I yeah. I was okay, in yeah. the back of the stage yeah. when that shit happened. Did you feel like, ah, right, this shit shut And y'all see that big motherfucker over there yeah, we on, see that on nigga. the couch right there? Yeah, we see that nigga. That nigga threw me talking about, you go get over here, you ain't going out there. You got a fucking ankle mounted on your leg. Oh, shit. You can't get in no bullshit. Uh -huh. and, and I looked up, I'm like, yeah, yeah, you right. So I still, but then he gonna throw me out there. And if you notice the big light skinned nigga, if you go look at it, yeah. they walk across the stage, yeah. it's him. Ah, I'm sure you I see that nigga too. You, you, put, <laughs> you put me out the shit yeah. and go and get, I'm gonna get in, in the shit. shit. Yeah. So nigga, it ain't like you push me out the way and stay with me. Right. You push me out the way and went to go fuck something up if you had to, you did so. But yeah, what was going, yeah, what was going through your mind when that shit was going on? Like I was sitting my Wiz Khalifa. 
honestly, what was going through my mind at that time it happened was, damn, I wish I could hit this shit with homies. That's my bro. He was blowing that gas. And I ain't smoked weed in two years. You know what I'm saying? That's a good going, nigga to start. Yeah, yeah going, with, going yeah. through a situation that I'm going through, which is totally fucked up, unfair, I'm, we gonna the most that. injustice ass shit that I'm having to experience out of my own city. That's the place a part in where I'm saying, yo, I'm a big fish in a small pond. God, once you get this bullshit ass case away from me, let me get up, up out of here for me to be as big as I am and experience that. But yeah, Wiz was blowing some, some fucking gas and I'm like, damn. He keep trying to pass it and shit. I'm like, Wiz, I can't smoke, bro. He was like, oh, shit, <laughs> man. That nigga phony. You know, that shit. And then all of a sudden, shit went crazy. So I kind of missed the whole beginning of it. I had to go back and look and see what, yeah. what it was all about and shit yeah. like that. But I mean, you've been around a lot of altercations to where yeah. it's like, I wonder like what goes through Buckhead when like shit pop off on a, on a major stage where you like, oh, yeah. shit, do you, do you reverse the whole book? Or you like, all right, let me just... Yeah. Let me get back. Well, no, it's it's always going to be, let me see what the fuck going on yeah. type of shit. <laughs> is a nigga trying to get at me? Yeah. Or is he getting at my people or whatever? So I'm type of nigga where, you know, um, everybody's aware of what went on years and years and years ago at the yeah. award show Bible, shit. Yeah, Bible. You know, and that was just based off natural instincts that I think anybody would have done seeing, you know, the tussle that went on from my perspective. You know, I was in the back of a stage and I seen what was happening through a teleprompter. Yeah. And then I, all my people left front. So when I got up front, I seen what I seen and said, oh, no, 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 we can't go that way. Let's, let's, let's change it up. Let's, uh, let's let him go. You know what I mean? And shit happened, uh, you know, shit. it is what it is. And no different in that situation that happened uh, at the verses. It was like, God damn it. For one, I gotta get up because this big ass nigga that made me fall throwing me on the ground and shit. To my, you ain't going one way. So by the time I get up, it was kind of being deflected. Yeah. And I love how they rebounded that situation. Man, I, I, we watched you know a lot. We saying? thought it's over. You know, it's yeah, over. Oh, shit. This is wild. Yeah, versus shutdown. Yeah. Shit. I, it was over. Yeah, how, that was the feeling of it all. <laughs> but to see it rebound and to go through and even Busy come through with his apology because. You know, like I say, that's a very competitive uh, two groups in that era of time of making that music. I think they always had, you know, some type of competition involved with each other. And it was just dope seeing that play out like that on TV. You can't rehearse yeah. that type bro, shit. Bro. Now, I ain't, I ain't gonna lie, my, ho my homeboy is the biggest 3-6 fan. And I never forget, he used to have a song that they, they, they had, it. man, I hate Bone. Fuck you, Bone. Fuck you, Bone. You, you man, I, man I hate. I remember that song, so that's the only thing hey, that was man, going through my head. Them, them dudes right there, bro, they some live wise, man. <laughs> DJ Paul, Juicy J. Yeah. Project Pat, yeah. even Gangsta Boo crazy ass and LeChat, all of, <laughs> no. they, they, they wild individuals. Like yeah. they, they come from it, they come from Memphis like a motherfucker. And Memphis is an active ass city in regards of, uh, you know, it, it kind of gives you the aura of Memphis by just understanding crunk, get buck, that, that, that energy type music anyway. Exactly. Where the, most motherfuckers from Memphis is like that. Like they live, you know what I mean? They, they get active, you know what I'm saying? Facts. Shit, now, man. Now, I ain't gonna lie, you gave pretty much your story, your whole story on Vlad TV, Big Facts. I mean, if anybody wouldn't want to know your word for word story, go word. there. Um, but, you know, we want to just basically touch on you. You were part of Cash Money, um, you know, uh, in G Unit. Mind you, since the 90s, there's maybe what? No Limit, Bad Boy, Facts. Death Row, right. Cash Money, Facts. G Unit, Young Money. That's like, Facts. you're part of two of the biggest situations that ever happened, like in hip hop since the 90s. And um, how does that feel for you? Cause that, can't nobody really claim that right there. That's big. And like, yeah, like do I you ever sit back and reflect way. like, yeah, like damn, like you just time, 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 time tells everything. You just, re you got me reflecting like a motherfucker right like, now sitting here like, damn, you right. You know? and, and to start it off, um, you were never on paperwork with Cash Money. And of course, never. you know, we know the story as far as you coming up with, uh, you know, Juvenile and everything. Mm -hmm. um, why were you never strictly on paper? Was it more of you? not knowing the business or was it more of baby slim maybe not wanting to push you yeah i'm just curious why you never signed that. i i think we're too young <laughs> I, I i i really honestly think that the hot boys started to really take off 
and the focus of what was to come, not to say that I wouldn't have got a contract, right? but it delayed, I think, more of whatever Baby was planning to do with me at the time. And I don't blame Baby for that shit now and understanding the business and really realizing, you know, he, when the, you know, when the getting is good, you better get it type shit, you know, he had to focus on BG, Juvenile, Wayne, and Turk because they are the stars. And now the broader they're becoming, it was kind of hard to throw somebody else out there and try to add to the mix outside of what was established to the Hot Boys as just another artist. Because if you think about it, there was never another artist that was established in cash money through that era outside of the Hot Boys on cash money. You understand? You know, now once they blossom and became what they are, you know, you got Wayne that's over there and he went got Nicki and then you got Drake. I mean, I remember when, I remember when Wayne played a Drake record for me. Before Drake was yeah. Before Drake was Drake. I don't even think Drake would even know this shit. I had pulled up to his uh bus. We were saying, where was we at? Kentucky? Somewhere I think. Um, but I had hit Wayne up and he was in he was, I think it was Chattanooga. And that's Tennessee for y'all, like what the right, fuck right, is Chattanooga? T right. O. Yeah. <laughs> but I had pulled up and Wayne was like, uh, he was sleeping on his bus by his fucking self. It fucked me up. He wasn't by himself, but he was there. So he was like, uh, I was beating on the door. I'm like, man, this motherfucker done told me, come here, man. You getting... And then I was calling, he was like, I'm on a bus. And I was like, damn, yo ass on a bus. You know, I ain't seen nobody around type shit. And he, we, you know, he got up, we started chilling and shit. And he was like, Buck, bro, I want you to hear, you know, my artist type shit. And I'm on the front of the bus just listening. And then he played this, this dude, you know what I mean? And I'm like, this Wayne, that motherfucker finna be the biggest thing in the world. Oh, you I do. swear to God, I Damn. knew it. Wayne will tell you that. I also remember him playing, uh, you remember the record? Lick, 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 yeah, like yeah, 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 yeah. And a couple more records, he was asking for my opinion on which one he should go with. And the lollipop shit was so crazy. I'm like, yo, that shit right there is gonna be a fucking hit, bro. What made you feel that hoe was a hit? Yeah. Well, it's yeah. just something that happens to me mentally where I can hear records even when I create them and feel and know that they're a hit record. Like, I've had this magical, blessed thing. I mean, I told 50, yeah. as fucked up as me and 50's situation is being, he'll tell you, I'm pretty sure, a lot to himself that. <laughs> before the fact of him ever selling any amount of records that we know, when he created uh, Get Rich or Die Trying, and we were making that project, or he was making that project, and just hearing it, I, well, I had to tell 50, yo, bro, you finna sell 10 million records. At the time, it was kind of like unheard of for an artist yeah. to sell that. So he even looked at me then and was like, 10 million? Yeah. Nah. Oh, no, nah. niggas better start listening to Buck. God damn it. God damn. Damn. Uh, now nigga, 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 Thomas, God damn it. Exactly. Now this motherfucker is uh, so however many millions. But like I say, I just been blessed to have, you know how, how that feeling that you get of, of, of music where it's, it's, it sounds timeless. Yeah. That's what I think intrigues me to be able to say, you know, pick this record or that's what I like, or you're gonna do this, you do that. I'm more, I graduate to timeless music. If I can hear a record and play it over and over and over and over again, oh, yeah. like the radio gonna eventually do to make it become a hit, oh, yeah. then I know, you understand, that it's got hit potential, you know what I'm saying, for I, sure. I say it like this, um, you know, and I wanna, you know, kinda go out in off your legacy, man, because from, Cash Money, huh? Juvenile, doing the Han video. For you to be there and having your cars part of that video to give yeah. him the look for the world to uh, solidify Juvenile, Facts. to 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 be part of Me that. And movement. my homeboys, you know. Yeah, what you I'm and your homeboys. Yeah. yeah, but you know, you, the click attendant, you know, yeah, it was people hell, that they pulled it, down. It, hell for you yeah. to be for you to be integral in that, and then for you to be on Bloodhound where Fifty called you, say, "Hey, that that record, I need that," and be part of uh, Get Rich or Die Trying. Word. Um, when you sit back and look at your legacy, it's like shit. I'm part of a lot of kickoff projects. Yeah. Do you feel like you had that in you one more time to be part of something 
that major I, on that fuck scale. Fuck one more time. I got it. Three. I got Coming it. Three. I got it in me for a lifetime. Yeah. I think that's what's happening now is that the people are starting to experience that. I've never established myself globally as a solo artist. Mm. You understand? I've always was a part of a group, which was G-Unit. And of course, when you're a part of a group, I've dropped a solo, a couple solo projects by being an, a, an artist. But to actually be a solo artist and actually establish myself like a lot of these artists have I, I just haven't, so I'm kind of uh, late to the party type of dude, but I am the party type of dude. There you, go. you dig what I'm saying? There you go. So nah, it's for like, real. Uh, we gonna like wait. My, the party gonna wait for you. Yeah, you feel me? So it's like my upbringing really plays a part in the way I make music, the way I hear it, the way I'm able to establish timeless music and shit like yeah. that. As a kid, you know, I'm really been amongst. Pimp C and Bun B nice as a kid and really there with them, you know what I'm saying? Um, and, and, and really absorbing the history of what they've done hands on, not go. from just being a fan of the music, but being blessed to be like right there with them. You dig what I'm saying? Type of shit. And, How many people could say that? You know, you know it's just different, you know what I mean? the history. I really truly can say that you know, my life has a movie to it. And I think it may be the biggest thing that I do do at some point in time in my career is to be able to really give the true story of my life. Mm. And uh, I also think that that's always something that I, I've always thought that, you know, acting is going to be a pretty good thing for me too because, you know, I've always liked it that as well. You know, I look at music as a stepping stone. Not nah, facts for everybody, you know, to build the whole brand. Word. Um, what's uh, coming up next for you? Uh, what you got going on? I know, I know you're in the city in Dallas, but yeah, it's time to promo, man. What does Young Buck have coming up? What can the fans look for forward to? Right now, I've look. A lot of people be like, "Yo, bro, you need to drop new music." Well, I'm gonna oh, say no. this shit right here for y'all, live and direct. Real life. Y'all need to go catch up on the music that the fucking that I already fucking dropped. Do that first. I know I'm, I haven't dropped a lot of music on these major platforms or by having this big system behind me, but don't worry, you know it's all getting into plays and the works. And uh, I've had a lot of different offers and shit that I don't want to speak on in regards of you know signing with this person or that person or this label or that label, and. Uh, who knows what the future holds, but right now I, I will promote the fact that I got, you know, 10 mixtapes out. There you go. You know what I'm saying? Thanks. And they, and they all start with 10. You got 10 bricks, 10 plugs, 10 bodies, uh, 10 politics, mm. uh, 10 bullets. Mm. Help me out. 10 pints. 10 pints. Oh, shit. You know what I'm saying? Oh, shit. So if you go to... What's Apple, the culmination? 10 a key? What's, what's, what's the yeah. culmination? Well, well, what it was, I wanted to drop 10 mixtapes in 10 months with 10 songs. Okay. Oh, hell yeah. Yeah, nah, for real. You know, so that's over 100 songs that y'all could go catch up there with. It's just there. This real life bangers. Every tape. Let me know which one you hear right now is your favorite when you see me. Nah, facts. Put um, it in the goddamn comments. Nah, we gonna run that one. Nah, we gonna run. We gonna we gonna run that. And one. I recently just dropped uh, another couple mixtapes. I dropped uh, Forty Days and Forty Nights, and the Outbreak. Oh, I dropped the Corona the shit. I dropped the Outbreak soon as the fucking coronavirus. Oh yeah, hit. oh that's smart. <laughs> so I, everybody, the day that it became aware to me that it was a coronavirus. The next day, I dropped the outbreak. Real shit. You know what I'm saying? Real shit. Nah, Real that's shit. Fun. Real and, shit. And, and, and then I dropped after they came with a, a, a fucking the vaccine. vaccine. I dropped a mixtape called The Vaccine. Oh, this nigga. So that's out right hey, now. Yeah, yeah. Hey, don't, 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 don't drop the monkey pox, nigga. Yeah, don't, <laughs> I ain't fucking Wait till the next bitch. I ain't fucking with the monkey pox. I ain't fucking with the monkey pox. Yeah, don't, don't drop that out. <laughs> skip, skip that one, goddamn. We skip ain't touching that, that one. <laughs> I'm but, giving the fucking hey, monkey pox. Man, but, Buck, uh, you got any shout outs you want to give, man? I dropped 40 days, 40 nights as well. But yeah, I want to give a shout out to y'all. This has been a Love. real dope ass interview. You know what Love. I'm saying? Come back through. Hey, this home, man. Yeah. From now on, this home for yeah. you. Yeah, I'm definitely going to come through and shut it down. I want to shout out um, Dallas because I'm here. I want to shout out Cashville for always being my home, my supporters, and, and everything. Uh, I want to shout out to all the promoters that's been booking me lately. 
I'm 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 really on a uh, I can't say a comeback type shit because yeah, I don't really feel won. like I never, yeah, went, never nowhere, really went nowhere. But I am. You showing your face? You sh- I'm showing, you showing my your face, face right now and letting y'all see that I'm living. You dig what I'm saying? Yeah, and man. I'm really on my shit. You know, uh, real quick, I want to address a situation before I get out of here. Please do. Um, you know, it's a real thing out here that we experience about the injustice that's going on. We're having a lot of rappers, uh, I want to say, hold your head to a, you know, a young thug, you know what I'm saying, and, and those boys and all of that shit that they're going through. It is a real target that's on the rappers' backs, I would say that. And uh, I was speaking briefly about it earlier, and now I'm telling you, it's like even me, I'm dealing with a situation where you know I've been having to fight in my own city of something that I literally had nothing to do with. Even they know. They know it so much that the person who shot the actual gun, they dropped their fucking charge to try to get a conviction on me to say, oh, you was a felon. You know what I'm saying? You wouldn't supposed to be around this motherfucker. And I'm like, well, shit, I wouldn't around the motherfucker. I didn't know. You know, a motherfucker had a gun, we'll go shoot a gun, whatever the case may be. But what I say to and break this aware is that, uh, you know, for you artists out here, and once you go create a name for yourself, you know, uh, beware of, 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 of your surroundings, beware of, uh, you know, the laws of the city, because, you know, depending on where you at, you know, you can make a difference to your city but if you don't be careful, your city can try to make a difference to you. And I ain't talking about the niggas in the streets. I'm talking about the police and the government system or that. That's right. You can become a victim of that. And I've had to fight that throughout my career for so, mo- no. so long that I-, I figure when God gives me the blessing I'm looking for and wipe these things away from me now, now that's my, that's my uh, I guess, gas to say now it's time to get on up out of here because once you realize that you're a big fish in a small pond like myself and you're having to fight these things or say you go through things and they treat you different or, yeah. you know, the, the news media, uh, where you're from, uh, 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 create lies just the narratives. the narratives of the story. You know what I'm saying? They'll paint the picture and expect for you to have to... Uh, hang it up on the wall type shit, or live with it. You dig what I'm saying? Nah, hey. nah that ain't my picture. You dig what I I'm saying? Nah, and no, I'm not hanging it up on my wall. There you go. You dig? So for me, like I say, man, stay safe. Uh, I'm sending my blessings out again to those that's locked down. My celly is from Dallas right here. Talk about I was in the federal penitentiary with this guy right here to the left of me, man. Yeah. And uh, he's the only motherfucker ever beat me in basketball. Hold up. Yeah. Hold up. On the prison, on the the prison f- yard. You yeah. did what I'm saying? Yeah, okay, okay, yeah. Like three. Asterisk. It's like three more of them. They not in here right okay, now. Yeah, but he, yeah. him, uh, that, that SG there, he was one of, uh, one of my cellies in, in federal prison. You dig what I'm saying? And... Uh, just uh, I was just telling them like man to to go through that what we done experienced and what we done seen and, and, and watched and lived every day, and to be out here and him being successful in what he's doing there and, you and I'm being successful in what I'm doing, it's blessing. So you know, now nah, you 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 take the, advantage of your opportunities. You yeah, know? you the epitome of overcoming from felonies, child support, everything that they try to hit you with, All man. Of that shit, blessings man. to overcoming, man. Um, I just gotta say, man, you know my brother Curtis Ray, he grew up on you. Uh, he was a G unit fan, man. You kind of molded him. He's 27 now, but you molded that man. But you are a living legend. We have Thank him on you, here man. on the couch, man. Goddamn Thank young man. buck. Man. You man. are young. a real life street star. This shit, this shit is. Hey, talk this about shit it. Talk about to go viral. Yeah, I'm telling you, I know what's about talk to go about viral. It. Talk Yo, about it. If this shit go viral, I already done told niggas they got hits. Yeah. So this will be the first time that I done done a fucking podcast interview and told a nigga, "Yo, we're going viral." Talk so, about. It. We gonna start with that. If, if, if this shit happens, nigga, ah, I'm going to start looking at myself from a whole different perspective, dude. <laughs> Real life street stars. Nah, huh? Yeah, man. Shout out Real Life Street Stars, nigga. Move.